Imagine being able to wield the power of the sun. Think about that for a second. Well, it turns out you actually can. With solar power, we can do just that. I've messed around and done quite a bit of research on solar power and have bought everything I need to accomplish a small scalar solar setup. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to get into solar power, solar power as a hobby. First, we're gonna to get to some of the basics of electronics and what you're gonna to need to accomplish a small scale solar setup. Then, after that, we're going to assemble it and we're gonna give you a price tag of all the components. Then, we can jump into the real usage of solar power. As we get into this video, I just want to remind you, I'm not an expert by any means, and we're not here to make big gains on energy. We're here to learn just a little bit about solar power. So don't expect any real money gains or any big heavy appliance use with the solar power setup. So let's dive right in. First we need to understand a little bit about electronics. So first thing first, we're dealing with electricity. So be very careful. The most pertinent example I can give you is to not touch the negative and positive um, terminals on a battery or power source at the same time. It could give you a little bit of a shock depending on how powerful that battery is. Uh, next thing we have to understand is that solar power is mostly direct current power. We're talking about direct current power that's flowing basically in only one direction as opposed to alternating current which can flow in two directions or more. Um, the use for this basically comes when you're actually powering a house or uh, an electronic. Um, the power in your house is alternating current. That's what comes straight from the grid. Um, so most of your appliances are going to depend on alternating current. Um, direct current cannot power that, so you're going to need a converter. The next thing we need to understand about solar power is that it is currently not very efficient. So you will see a lot of people that are in solar power right now, but um, I just wanted to start it as a hobby just to understand solar power and exactly what I can get myself into. Um, in the coming decade, it might become efficient enough. So for example, right now, solar powers are between about 15, or about 11 to 24% um, efficient. So from the sun to power ratio, you know, we're not getting a huge um, bit out of that. So um, in the coming decade, we're looking at um, hypotheticals of between um, 25 and 50, which is a lot more efficient. And we can really be actually jumping into solar panel, solar power at that time. So those are just a couple of things, basic electronics we need to understand about that. So now let's jump into what we're going to need before we assemble. So first thing first, we're obviously gonna need our solar panel. Right here, I got a, um, solar panel it's from ebay but it's from a distributor called new power um it is a 10 watt that's not a lot of energy about enough to barely power a laptop um it's a 10 watt 12 volt battery so my entire setup is going to be 12 volts so we're going to need to make sure all of our components are rated for at least 12 volts and that's basically um it makes it easy for me because that's basically the kind of power you get from a car so getting the power inverter, the battery, everything was super easy, super not very complex. I didn't need to worry about too many variables. So we got a 10 watt, 12 volt ba um, panel from New Power. Um, after that, we're going to need a 12 volt solar charge controller. Um, basically what this does is it regulates the power going from the panel to the battery and also to the, it also connects the battery to the power inverter. Um, this can be essential from panel to battery to make sure that the panel is not putting too much energy into the um, Battery which could cause it to explode fail or etc. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you get a solar charge controller um, After that of course is our solar um, power ba um, battery or in this case I just found it's actually a um, what I believe is a motorcycle battery um, You can just connect it. It's a sealed lead acid battery. It's a 12 volt um, battery um, you just have to get the wires to connect to it, and at that point, you have a rechargeable battery. Um, after that, we're going to need our power inverter. So power inverters are kind of expensive these days, especially if you're getting it for solar power. So because I made mine a 12 volt setup, um, let's think of this basically like a car. So we've got the battery and we wanna to connect to your phone. What you're gonna need is a power inverter um, to change that um, direct current power that's also in your car into alter alternating current. So I'm basically treating my setup like a car. So what I did is I went on eBay and I bought this little um, cigarette lighter sort of car um, outlet. 
and I connected that to um, something I already had, was, which was a car power inverter. So being able to connect that made it really easy, and now I have something I connect directly into your laptop as a socket. So that makes it really easy and really simplifies the setup in, instead of having to buy more wire and more connectors and getting a power inverter, which is a lot more expensive and something you really won't need for this small, minimal scale setup. All right, so now that we know what we're going to need for the setup, let's go ahead and jump right into the assembly process of this. All right, so everything looks a little bit crowded here, and I promise we're going to go ahead and simplify and make things a little bit easier and a little bit more digestible. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in um, the video preceding this is that I actually did get wires, connectors, and everything. I got that from my local hardware store. Um, I did not, these did not come included with anything basically. So let's go ahead and get into the assembly. First thing first, we got our solar panel um, that comes with a wire right here that connects straight, um, that has wires that are balled at the end. There's no connectors on them. Some solar panels might come with connectors, but mine did not. So um, in the excitement and in the moments, um, I went ahead and just plugged them straight in. I did not put connectors on them because I wanted to see my solar panel work. Um, you obviously can add connectors for safety and make sure that nothing um, touches that's not supposed to touch. So um, on the solar charge controller, what you're going to do is you're going to see these little screws here. So lefty loosey, you're going to unscrew them so you have a little gap here. There's these metal, these two metal plates that are pressing down and it is screwed down. That create, creates that connection to make sure it's nice and secure. So it's gonna, when you loosen it, it's gonna open. You can put your wires or connectors in. And after that, you can go ahead and righty tighty screw them back in. So when you try to tug on them, it's nice and snug. It's not gonna come loose. And it creates a contact and you can, you, you, you know that the um, electricity is going through. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna connect your battery. So for this, this is the part where I use bullet connectors and wires that I bought from Lowe's. Um, I crimped, cut the wires, and um, connected them to these bullet connectors. These bullet connectors were a little bit too big for the solar charge controller, so I went ahead and um, sort of smushed them a little bit too, just so they would fit inside. Um, again, lefty loosey, you unscrew the screws, and you go ahead and plug those bad boys in. Righty tighty, you screw them on, make sure there's a nice snug connection. And after that, on this side right here, I got these clamps. Um, there are specific connectors for the battery, but I was just lazy, didn't look for them or purchase them. So I just went ahead and crimped them on here. So all you gotta do here is one at a time, not at the same time, unless you wanna get shocked and feel that surge of electricity. You're going to one at a time connect the clamps on, and at that point you should see your solar charge controller turn on. If you just wanna charge your um, battery at, that, at this time, it will come with a sex accessory mode turned on automatically. So what you gotta do is you just gotta click this button on the right here, it turns it off, so it's only charging the battery. All right, so next thing after that is we've got to connect it to an appliance to whatever we want to um, power. So again, um, like I said earlier, I got this um, cigarette lighter sort of car um, charger um, off of eBay. I went ahead and bought that, connected it up. I cut the wires also over here and went ahead and did bullet connections too. And what I did is basically just connect that up and then connected it to my power inverter. So now I can just connect whatever I want to this power inverter, USBs or just a typical socket. And there we go. That's our assembly for the setup. So let's go ahead and get into the actual prices. Let me look at my paper here real quick. So here we go. So first thing first, we're going to talk about the solar panel. Um, I got the solar panel from U Power, of course, and I got that for $22.40. Um, after that, I got the battery for about $16.49. I got the inverter at about $14. Um, I got the charge controller at about $9.87. The wires and clamps about twelve dollars, so we're actually at less than a hundred dollars for this entire setup. I paid only about seventy-five dollars. I don't think any more than that. And this is just the price I bought uh, my stuff at. If you'd like to mess around with your setup and see what else you can 
try to um, achieve, maybe get it cheaper, maybe a little bit more expensive for a little bit higher quality stuff, maybe a better solar panel, a better battery, better capacities, you can absolutely do a little bit more, maybe peak over just $100, maybe a little bit more. So let's go ahead and head back to the actual video. Let's think about the real life application. All right, so let's think real life power application. What can we do with this setup? So as I said earlier, this is not a setup meant to be for high power production. You're just not gonna get all that out of it. Um, if I'm being honest about it, um, I'm not sure what the charge level at the time was, but I was basically only able to charge my iPad once with this battery before it died. So that will give you just basically a sense of scale of what we're dealing with here. So one thing I like to do a lot is to camp every now and then. I would love to camp more often and with this setup, I'll be able to be more mobile and not have to pay more for an electric spot as to you know, a non-electric spot that doesn't have electricity because I can basically go off the grid with this. So what I mean by this is if it's too hot um, in the summertime, you know, I can get a little fan and connect it to this um, solar panel setup and I basically have something to cool me off. Let's say I'm in an area where the ground is just really hard, too bumpy, a lot of tree roots and rocks. I can um, get a air inflatable mattress. I can get a little air pump. We can connect it right in. I'll have that in no time. That basically powers the entire thing all in an off-grid setup. I can charge my phone, my laptop, all of course for a limited time, um, depending on how um, big your battery is. So these are just a couple of the things that you can do with this small-scale solar setup. You can do also a lot more things. You can the, the options are basically endless in this case. I obviously wouldn't recommend like trying to connect your fridge to a small battery like this because it either isn't going to last very long or it's just going to break the entire setup. Maybe you know, do something damaging to maybe your either refrigerator, battery setup, whatever, I wouldn't try that, but you can try something more on a small scale. You can power certain lights in the house with this um, and maybe control it with a Wi-Fi setup so it only turns on and off at the same time to save energy. You can just think about a lot of really creative ways to do things with the solar panel setup, but again, you know, you obviously are limited to the fact that this is a small scale solar setup you're limited by the fact that the sun is only out during certain times of day, so you can't charge it all day, every day, you know, like you can get power from coal any time you want, as long as it's burning, doing something like that. So um, that, that's just some of the real life application. Um, so yeah, I, I go ahead, you know, try this out if you really want to. It's really fun, really interesting. It really gets you into electronics, into just some of the really fun stuff that you would probably think about in math, but you just like, you know, where are you gonna use this in real life? You know, you might learn a little bit about that. Um, so I just wanna say thank you for watching my video. Thank you for, you know, tuning in for this song, listening to my really monotone voice for this song. I'm trying to add a little bit of inflection every now and then just to keep the video interesting, but I appreciate you joining this journey with me. Um, subscribe, like, you know, let me know what you think, any improvements I can make to my setup. Um, just let me know, you know, thank you really much a lot for watching my video. I'm going to create more videos on something like this in the future. And yeah, again, thanks for watching. Have a good day.